Hello, everyone, and welcome to this podcast for the Light Review with me, Chris Fordham, looking into how different creative industries approach lighting design. Uh, today, we are joined by Juliet. Hi, Hello. Juliet. Hi, Chris. An interior designer and director at Stevenson Wright. So mm -hmm. welcome. I, I trust you're well, and thanks so much for taking the time out to talk to us. Very well. Thank you. Everyone's going, it's going a bit mad at the moment, isn't it? Everyone says, uh, I want to do it the house. Really, <laughs> I know, it really is crazy. And we're getting very used to doing these, these Zooms now. So it's like second nature to us. Although it's always a bit strange, but yes. Well, you look very confident. So I'm very, I'm happy for that. <laughs> uh, yeah, a well-seasoned professional, perhaps. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I guess really my first question would be, what role does light play for you in your projects as an interior designer? And, uh, and what is the most important aspect for you when it comes to lighting design? Because obviously it's an integral part of uh, any design, isn't it? It's hugely important for us. Um, to us, lighting just cannot be an afterthought. It's really integral to our interiors and the designs that we do. Um, and actually one of the biggest challenges for us is to um, encourage our clients to see the value in good lighting design because really without it every beautiful design that we do it falls a little bit flat and I know that sounds like it sounds silly but you know it'll be a lovely interior but it just won't be shown at its absolute best so yes for us lighting design is so important. I'm sure that's music to the ears of everyone who was listening to that given that it's a lighting magazine and um they all love that you said that. I mean, well, and it's so true. I mean, one thing that's always interested me is when it comes to the job title interior designer, because it is quite a broad brush, isn't it? Especially when it comes to a question of the lit effect. What is your approach to this? And how much does the aesthetic of the product drive your design choices? Because sometimes interior designers are more concerned with how the product looks, perhaps, than the actual lit effect. I know. Well, I'm sure a lot of people are, but we definitely got wiser to this over the years. And um, in fact, we opened a, a showroom, a collaborative showroom with a lighting designer. And that certainly has um, helped us enormously in terms of our knowledge of lighting and its requirements. Um, so in fact, it won Lutron Judge's Choice of the Year Award 2020. My so gosh. We, do, we do feel like we know a little bit about lighting now. Oh. Accolade, um, indeed, um, from Lutron. Oh, indeed. They're massive, aren't they? Yeah, they're plug in. So we, um, I must say, we work most of the time with a lighting designer on our projects. We use Mark Kavanagh from um, Future Light Design, and he is um, our the showroom owner, so the collaborative showroom that we have, and uh, he really has educated us. Um, I guess for me, Chris, my li my light bulb moment. Excuse the pun was um, one of our first projects that we did with Mark. And we had the opportunity to actually stay in our client's home. He was away and we were just finishing off the, the final touches of this apartment. Actually, it wasn't, a, it was a, a lake house, a beautiful lake house. And, um, and we stayed there. And that was when I really appreciated all the different scene setting, the, the lighting levels and how that changed throughout the day. And then as evening came, you know, the flick of a switch, it's just so easy and it was beautiful to experience. And, and that was really when it clicked for me and I thought, gosh, I really understand now um, how important that is. That's really interesting. I mean, nonetheless, nonetheless that he, they let you stay in the house as well. I know. If I understood that correctly, because that sounds quite crazy. But I think the fact that you can understand that is, is it, I mean, what sets good designers apart from average designers is the ability to take a homogenous approach, isn't it? And also to know the strengths and the weaknesses of, of, a, of an installation and what you can bring and what you can't bring. And that's really interesting. And uh, good to hear that you use lighting designers because obviously as a lighting designer myself it's yeah it's, in, it's encouraging and it's it's really yeah. nice to hear. Um, it's really important you know it, it's also about a feeling so to follow on from what I was just saying it's 
it isn't just about what you can see, it's about what you feel when you're in that space and lighting really achieves that. It, it, it creates, um, well, you can change a mood, can't you, with lighting, which is really very clever. Absolutely. So, I think a good example, if I remember correctly, not that, and it has been a while since I've been to a restaurant, but. Oh um, yeah. I'm trying to remember, it might, it's not Pizza Express, it's, um, it might be Pizza Express, they, when they dot the tables. Yes, they do, really, really bright on top yeah. of a, a gerber, a flower or something, isn't it? Yeah, a really narrow spot, so, and in fact, sometimes you go to restaurants abroad, and they do just have a candle or something, and you think, mm. the whole place would be really shabby, but with that candle, it doesn't actually matter, does it? It just brings you it. that really... It's that the mood, place. I have to say, yeah. In fact... I have gained a great deal from working with good interior designers. I mean, it is um, it is a symbiotic relationship for something, isn't it? Um, and I, I think there's a lot of shared values when working with lighting. Mm -hmm. What would you say are your biggest challenges and who who drives the lighting process for you? When, when um, well, like, like I said before, really getting clients to understand the value of the lighting is, is our biggest challenge by, by far, um, but also, choosing light fittings you know you might choose you might select something that's really beautiful and you really want that in somebody's home but then you know perhaps it's not compatible with um a dim to warm or something like that and then or, or it's going to start flickering or buzzing because perhaps it's not the most expensive light fitting but you like the look of it so it's there's definitely challenges like that involved as well um we definitely have learned that a dim to warm is the best approach so that you don't have a, a, a grey lighting when you when you dim your lights. Um, and we go into a lot of homes where developers have literally just put in a, a cold grid ceiling arrangement. Yeah, I hate that. And, you know, it's just casting the wrong shadows on your faces or around the room. And... Um, so those are those are challenges, but they're very easily um, adapted. I think uh, they're very wise words, actually, what you said, and that's exactly my my. I've got a massive bug there, just grids in the ceiling. Of, oh, massive. Uh, and you know that not all contractors, but many contractors, they just want to get in and out. They chuck some lights in the ceiling, and their job's done. But really, that's not what it's all about, is it? And because the thing that annoys me is the fact that these are there forever, more or less. I mean, they're not going to change. So after you've just renovated your house, the last thing you want to be doing is then saying, oh, that lighting's not right, because you just have to rip everything out again, won't you? And this I know. Is... And the other thing we find is, you know, somebody might install a Lutron system that um, is really expensive and, you know, is all singing or dancing. But unless an actual trained lighting designer comes in and scene sets that, and, and really pays attention to the items in the room or textures or artwork or whatever, then it's not actually gonna be doing its job anyway. No. So. no, you're totally right. And obviously simplicity is key, I think, for those sorts of, um, for Lutron and Rayco and such like, because the last thing you want is something that's so complicated that after the person who installed it leaves, you don't have a Scooby-Doo about how it's gonna work. Yeah. And that again goes back to one of your questions about challenges, because one of the first things that our clients say to us is, oh, I don't want anything too complicated. I can't cope with, um, with anything too technological. But um, really, I mean, do you want to go into a room and flick a switch and everything be beautiful for that particular time of day? Or do you want to be going and twizzling five separate dimmer knobs to try and achieve a level of light that you're happy with every day? So. It's, a, it's about achieving a balance, isn't it? Yeah, and I think with technology, it's about small incremental changes that make a big difference over time. And certainly I'm, I'm a big fan of systems that allow you to do that because they just make life easier, don't they? And they make the end result a lot better because it's almost, you've got a moment in time where you know that that's all gonna be okay for always, so. Absolutely. Uh, excellent. Yeah. Right, I'm gonna wrap it up there. It's been amazing talking to you. Uh, happy face on a, on a sunny day, so that, that's great. Um, well, sunny, although it's starting to pour down with rain here now, actually, so I don't know if the noise is being affected by that. No, 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 um, no, I didn't hear a thing. Uh, so thanks to you all for tuning in and be you. sure and to like this. We'll see you soon. See you Thank all you soon. for asking us. That's very kind of you, Chris. Oh, no, it's very kind of you. Thanks, for, thanks very much, Juliet.
All right then. All right. Bye.